Hello everyone, good afternoon. It's 4.30 here in Calgary, Alberta, and um, we are about to begin our yoga fusion workout. So, I shouldn't say workout, practice. Right, so it is our practice. Uh, so people are just coming on now. Um, good to see you coming on. Thank you for waving at me. And we'll just give everybody a few minutes to come on and make sure that you have yourself set up. What you wanna have is you wanna have a yoga mat. If you have blocks at home, it can be helpful, especially for some of the seated positions where we might be a little bit tight in our hips, the blocks will be helpful. As well, if you have a yoga belt, but if you don't have a yoga belt, you can use a bathrobe. So take a, you know, your belt off your bathrobe, run up and go get it, and you can use that as your yoga belt. If you have a yoga belt, bring your yoga belt to your mat, your blocks, make sure you have some water um, with you as well. And welcome to my newly renovated studio, used to be my living room. True confession, my husband always called it the Christmas room because the only time we ever sat in it was at Christmas time when the Christmas tree was in the room. So I'm actually really excited to tell him now we are using the living room more than just the Christmas room. We are using it for daily practice and today is a yoga practice. So um, the practice today will be a blend of primarily yoga, but you'll see an infusion of fitness and a little infusion of Pilates. And that's what the fusion program is all about, is infusing different practices together so that we can get the most out of the time that we have together. So today we only have 45 minutes, so I'm gonna fuse some different practices into what we're gonna be doing. So it's just about time, it's 4.30, so we'll begin. Remember to listen to your own body. We are all in different stages of how we're dealing with um, being at home perhaps, working from a home environment, perhaps not, be, not working right now, family at home, kids running around the house. So it's time to move everybody out of your way and say, this is my time for the next 45 minutes. So let's enjoy. We'll start with a seated position. So coming seated, uh, I'm gonna go with seated on the block. You can come seated uh, on the mat seated on the block, or if you've got tons of textbooks at home that you want to just come to a seated position. And just come to a comfortable cross-legged position, so whatever that is for you. And then bring your hands out over the knees, and just finding a tall posture to your spine. So from your sitting bones all the way through to the top of the head, find the length in your spine. And then just gently tuck the chin, Look downwards, close your eyes, and take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, let all the tension go. Breathing in and breathing out. So life happens all around us. My husband just walked into the front door. Okay, let's settle again. Inhale, exhale, close the eyes, letting that tension go. So if you got dog.
turns off the external world, it throws off the external thoughts, the things that are coming through us that are looking at. One more each way. Then come on back to center. And then rotate. So opposite hands move the back of the shoulder. Even head to the center. Axe on the opposite hand. So let's start to link our breathing, our breath with our movement. So as we rotate, we inhale to the center. We exhale to the finish. One more time each way. Creating that gentle rotation through the spine. And then back to the center. And so, taking your head to one side. And then over to the opposite side. And we're going to just sense any points of tension. Where does that live in your body? As you move it, we want to keep the tissues. The tissues of our body begin to soften and melt. where you can get your full breath. Your breath is an indication of whether your body is in stress. So bringing the thumbs to the sternum, the gaze soft. Let's connect back to the breath. Inhale. And exhale. Now let's begin to find an evenness in the breath. So an even inhalation and an even exhalation. So begin with maybe four counts in. Four counts out. And see if you can even out the tempo of the breath. So we even out the nervous system, the autonomic nervous system, which is your sympathetic nervous system, which creates energy and excitement in your inhalation, and your parasympathetic nervous system as you exhale creates calm and relaxation. So as we move into our poses, we need both strength and relaxation, that balance between the two of Around into a kneeling position 
just uh, moving your blocks off your mat, bringing the hands in front of you, and bringing the knees underneath you. So you find what we would call a vertical line in the arms and the legs. And take a deep breath here in. As you exhale, tuck the tailbone, curve the spine, round into the back, and then inhale, open the chest and gaze upwards. Exhale, we curve, and great to move it in the spine, and then inhale and lengthen. And now let your body move. That means you bend the elbows and move more to the shoulder and the arms as well. Allow the movement to happen. Be a little bit freer perhaps today with your practice. So then rather than feeling rigid, allow movement to occur one more time with your exhalation and your inhalation. And then behind the center. Let's walk the hands a little bit further forward and take your right foot forward, turn the toes out gently and open the hip. And we're just going to rock out and in. So often our hip joints are very, very tight. There's things going on within the joint. The joint is complex. And so as we have tension in that joint, it will pull in other parts of our body. So it might express itself in the low back. You might express yourself in your neck and shoulders. We just want to start to release and get some fluidity into the hip or some what we call synovial fluid. Right? When you move the joint, the fluid goes rushing into the joint to give it almost like a you know oil in the car or some lubrication. Right? And then step back. And let's go to the opposite side. So we step forward, you turn the toes out, and find that nice easy rock in the hips. And again, your range of motion is your range of motion. Be respectful of what your body gives and try not to judge your body for what it's not giving you today. Let's turn it to the positive. What are your body giving you today? And as we go through the entire practice today, take notes like, wow, I could do that and I could do this. And that felt really good for me today. So bring our minds to a positive place. We'll change how the body will respond. End up with exhale and hold. And then lift the hips up, step back. And come into a wide position with your knees, inside edges of the feet together, arms out, and then sink back into your hips, coming into your child's pose. Now, as you come into child's pose, sometimes the knees are uncomfortable. So if the back of your knee is like, ooh, that's not feeling good for me, bring your forearms down onto the floor. Only take back your weight to where it's comfortable, but take more load into your forearms. If you've got full range, you can lift the elbows up and sink into the hips and really feel that depth of the hip as you come back and lengthen into the spine. So now in the subtlety of this, as you are looking downward to the mat, just listen for some things to think about in the body. Take a deep breath here in and feel the breath move into the back of your cage. And as you exhale, feel softness come into the body. So can you direct the breath more deeply down the spine, the length of the spine, to the bottom of that diaphragm? What's interesting about your diaphragm is your diaphragm goes all the way to your low back. And sometimes we don't think about that in the back of our body. In the back of your body, the diaphragm attaches to the bottom rib cages. So it's deep and low. So let's see if you move the breath down deep into the body as you express the breath here. Now shifting the weight forward, walk your hands underneath you, curl the toes under. And let's just awaken the core. Spread the hands, put equal weight into your thumbs and your little fingers. Slightly tuck the chin, and as you inhale, feel strength to lift the abdominals upwards towards your spine as you exhale, as if you're bracing your body. I always think of it as, you know, you're doing a human pyramid and you're on the bottom. You brace, float the knees, and hold. And as you hold this, soften the elbow joint so we're not walking, and feel as though you've got some pliability in your hands, your shoulders, that you could move if you needed to, if you wanted to. So rather than locking in, be softer. Have some agility in the movement itself. And now let's breathe in. Out. And at any time, if you're feeling, I need to bring my knees back to the mat, just lower your knees to the mat. 
find that in your body that says, hmm, I need a little break, then pick it up again. Breathing in, breathing out. And now lift the hips up and press the heels towards the floor. So a little bit narrower stance in our downward facing dog, and maybe the heels will come down. Pick up the 10 toes if you have lots of range of motion, and spread the toes out as we come into this inverted V. And then lower the toes down, lift the heels, bend your knees, and lower back down. So we're gonna flow through that just to awaken the back of the body. So lift the knees, hover. Lift the hips, press. Lift the toes. Lower the toes. Lower the knees. Let's go again. Float the knees. Lift and press. Pick up the toes. Lower the toes. Lift the heels. Lower back down. Two more times on your own rhythm. Lifting. Floating. Being conscious of your breath. And lowering down. Walking your hands a little bit further forward, keeping the legs parallel to each other, tops of the feet down, press back again. So when you press back now, we're in a narrow child's pose. So in that narrow child's pose, the legs are parallel, and the ribs are going to rest. I'm just checking in with all of you. The ribs are, hey, Bella, good to see you. Are you practicing with me today? <laughs> ribs are going to be on top of the thighs. So now we're going to take the fuller expression of downward facing dog. So shift your weight forward, spread the hands, curl your toes under, lift the hips and press back. Now walk your feet about hip distance apart. And so inverted V, we're looking for a length in the body. So let's think about our foundation of the hands and then the radiation of energy up into the shoulders. And from your shoulders, a lengthening all the way to your sitting bones, reaching towards the ceiling. And then a lengthening from the sitting bones down the backs of the leg, through the hamstrings, the back of the knee, the calves, the heel, and the bottoms of the feet. And now just roll one heel up and one heel down and walk through it. And as you walk through, breathe. So inhale perhaps on one leg, exhale on the opposing leg, finding an easy rhythm for you. And then lower both heels to the floor. If your heels are floating, it's the action of lowering the heels. Maybe they come down today, maybe they don't. No judgment. Remember, think about what your body gives you. And then bring yourself forward into your plank. In your plank pose, soften the knees, hug your arms in, and lower all the way to the mat. Push yourself back up. Lower and press up. Now as you lower and lift, hug the upper arms into your side rib cage. So you're drawing those arms in and drawing the shoulders down your back. It's not about how many you can do. So take breaks when you feel like you've done enough. One more repetition, and then when you finish, lower all the way down. Point the toes away, spread the feet about hip distance apart. Actively lift the kneecaps and press the pelvis gently to the mat. Hands by the ribs, inhale, lengthen the spine, exhale, come down. Inhale, we lift. Exhale, and lower. As you're doing the inhalation to lift upwards, think of the extension starting at the upper back to the low back. So we begin up and come down. Often what will happen is the low back will want to take the work and the upper back doesn't. The upper back has a lot more mobility potential than the low back. Good. One more time. And then exhale, lower down. From your knees or curl your toes under, press the hands down and grip the upper arms into your side rib cage. Inhale here, exhale, push yourself up, press back, downward facing dog. Walk through the feet again, rolling out. 
through the ankles, breathing through it. And then both heels to the mat. Sitting bones lifting upwards. Hopefully the body is a little warmer. Lift the heels, bend your knees, look to your hands, and you can step your feet in or jump your feet in. Exhale, fold over your legs. Inhale, create length in your spine. Now, when we create length in the spine, if you have a lot of mobility, maybe you're just coming up with your fingertips. Maybe your hands are coming to your shins as you lengthen out through the spine. But the term lengthening your spine is exactly that. Lifting the sitting bones up and creating length from the sitting bones to the top of the head. So we're reaching in two opposing directions. If there's a lot of tension in your backs of your legs, bend your knees. Support yourself, create length. More importantly, than straightening the legs is can we create that length in the spine? Now pushing down through your feet to bring yourself all the way to standing. Hands come up overhead. Exhale to heart center. So it's a little bit of physics. <laughs> when we push downwards into the earth, it creates energy up out of the earth. So the more we can push down in our standing poses to find that groundedness, the more it lifts our body and unloads the joints to bring yourselves upwards. So let's come into mountain pose. Feet can be hip and shoulder apart, or feet can be together. So the inner edges of the big toes together, the inner heel slightly apart. Pick up all the toes and go. Right, so our feet our connection to the earth. So often, especially for those of you who are living in North America and who live where I do in Canada, our feet are in shoes because we have to survive cold winters. But what happens is our feet start to lose some function, our toes begin to um, become dysfunctional basically. So look at your hands and use your hands as you spread your hands, your thumbs can move, your fingers can move. So let's look to the toes. Right, so looking to your toes, can you pick up the big toes without lifting the other four toes? No judgment, just observe. Can my big toe lift without the others? Then press the big toes down and lift the other four toes up. And let's do a little toe dance. Big toes up, four toes down. Big toes down, four toes up. If some of you are starting to laugh at yourself, send me a message. Because sometimes it's like you're talking to your feet and they are not listening. How are your toes doing? Are your toes doing something? I know, right? It's like I'm talking to them. Why aren't they doing anything? It takes practice, especially if you have to wear shoes most of the time. So the reason we want to wake up the toes is because that's going to help you balance. So spread the toes, press down into the feet to find that groundedness of the feet, and then inhale, raise up from there. Exhale, come down. Press down to the feet, inhale, raise upwards. Exhale, coming down. Again, from the ground, bring yourself up. So think of an expansion of the body. So we expand into the space, and then we settle into the space we've created for ourselves. We expand into the space, and then we settle into the space. Come back to your breath. Maybe that accelerated the breath, it got a little excited. And then bring your arms up overhead. Taking your right hand to your left wrist, pull upwards. Find length as you exhale over to the side. And then stay in the side bend, lengthening all the way through from the outside edge of your supporting foot, through the hip, through the rib, through the shoulder, through the arm. Inhale to the center. Exhale, allow the arms to come down. Inhale, lift upwards, and let's take a hold of the opposite side. Press down into that foot as you reach over into that side bend. Find the length. Breathing should still be accessible. Your breath is now limited, and sometimes that can happen because you're compressing the diaphragm on one side of the body. So keep the breath full for you. Ease out of the pose if you're feeling like your breath is not easy. Inhale, lift. Exhale, and let the arms float down and coming back to center. So our first standing series. We're going to come into a lunge. So coming from the top of your mat, if you're using a yoga mat, you're going to step the left foot back. The right foot is going to stay 
pointing towards the top of the mat. The shoulders stay over the hips, and the back heel is lifted. Lower yourself down into a lunge. So where is your lunge position for you? And then stand up. And notice as you lower and as you lift, can you keep symmetry in the pelvis? So can the pelvis remain in a stable position? Can the torso remain stable as the lower body takes us through the motion? One more time. Lower down, reach the arms up, and now stick the leg back and coming into crescent lunge. So as we come into crescent lunge, allow the tailbone to drop down underneath you. Draw up from the pubic bone in front of the body towards the navel. So you're rotating that pelvis to remain underneath. And then if you've got lots of extension in your shoulders and your spine, feel free to extend back. Inhaling. Exhaling. Strength and stability. Power of the mind, power of the body. Know that you can do this for one more breath. Inhale. Exhale, let the arms float down. Interlace the fingers. Open up the shoulders as you breathe here. Gaze forward. Legs strong. At any time, if you need a break, straighten that front leg. Come back into it as you feel. Let the arms float, finding your balance. Shift your weight forward over the front leg. Now we're going to come into a balancing pose. We're going to lift that back leg and come up into a balance. Now how high that leg lifts up is up to you. If you can get your body into a T where the body is parallel to the ceiling and the leg to the ceiling, come to that place. If your balance is off, find a piece of furniture, put your fingertips along that piece of furniture, and then come into warrior three. Finding that balance. But keeping your gaze down towards the mat with the head in line with your spine, bend your supporting knee so that you just dip down and then lengthen up. So it's a little, little tiny squat and a lift. Now that little dip and lift strengthens the stabilizers of your hip. So keeping us strong for walking, running, dancing, all of the activities that you love to do. One more breath here, lower, lift. Bring your arms out, bring your knees up, find your balance. Breathe. And then let the leg float down. And walking through your feet. How do you do, everyone? We have to repeat that whole thing on the other side. But let's catch our breath first. Take a deep breath, inhale. Exhale from the center. Walk your feet about keep your shoulder width apart. And then you take the opposite leg back. So as we take the opposite leg back, find that staggered position. Back heel is lifted. Lower yourself down into your lunge where both knees are bent. Now the depth is going to vary depending on our mobility and our strength. Hips are underneath you, hands to your hips. Pelvis is pointing directly forward to the end of the mat as you lift up and you lower down. You lift up and you lower down. The back foot, if you can, try and keep that heel lifted the entire time. Sometimes when you lower, the heel wants to lower down. So keeping it lifted, right, nice. I wish I could see you. I know that you're doing this beautifully. Hang on to it. Okay. And then bring yourself down. Reach the arms up overhead, so you're going to reach up overhead, you're going to sneak that leg back. So finding your crescent lunge, lifting through the chest, allowing the hips to move down. If you think about the front femur bone, the front femur bone moves down towards the mat, the left hip rotates forward towards the front of the mat, and the tailbone tucks under, and draws up from the pubic bone towards your navel. So it's an action of the pelvis and then an action of the upper body as we come into pose. So breath full, breath free, hands come behind your back, interlace your fingers, open the chest. And continue to hold that strong lunge. And again, take a break by straightening that front leg. At any time, walk out of it. 
come back to it as necessary. Inhale here. Exhale, release the hands. Inhale, reach overhead. Exhale, open up. Come over that front leg. So you shift your weight into the front leg so you can lift that back leg and find your balance. And again, find a piece of furniture. If your balance is off, take that hip, roll it in. Engage the core, lift it up. How high or how far you tip is up to you. Bend your supporting leg. Press up from there. So it's a little dip and a lift. And a dip and a lift. Staying strong, staying focused. Two more repetitions, lowering and lifting. Lowering and lifting. Find your balance. Transition up to a knee balance. And if your balance is off today, you can always just touch your big toe down. Sometimes just that is going to help you. Lower the foot down. Take a deep breath, inhale, raise up. Exhale and find your center. A second series of standing poses. Bringing yourself onto the mat. Spread yourself into a straddle position with your legs. Turn the toes in slightly. And from this position, if you to look at the distance between your heels, it's about the distance of your legs, your leg length from your hip to your ankles. Another way to do it is take your arms up and then let the, the fingertips point down and the fingertips will align with the outside of the foot. It's kind of a good gauge as to how far I should be out. And that slight turn in of the toes, not too much, but slightly rolling the femurs in allows you to come forward a little more easily. This is where the block can be helpful. So if you know that you are tight, when you go into a standing forward bend, Place the block in front of you. Inhale, roll the shoulder blades back. Finding that length in the spine. Keep the length as you hinge forward. Pressing down equally into the inner and outer edge of the feet. Take your hands down the mat or onto the block. If you've got lots of range of motion, walk your hands between your feet, shoulder width apart. Then inhale, come up with your fingertips and lengthen the spine. Exhale, draw the elbows through your legs. Tuck the chin and start to reach the crown of the head towards the floor. Now you reach the crown of the head towards the floor. Take note. Inhale. Exhale. If you feel a pulling on the back of the knee, the back of the knee joint feels like it's taking the, the majority of the tension, I'd like you to ease off the pose or bend the knees slightly so that we're not straining through the backs of the knees. We want to be lengthening through the entire back of the leg from heel to knee and knee to hip. So finding that length for you. For some of you, this is a comfortable pose. For others of you, you can hardly wait till I tell you we're coming out. So again, listen to your body. To come out of the pose safely, press down through the feet, lengthen through the spine, come over to the fingertips, raise all the way up. Exhale and come up. Ah. Bring the heels in, turn the toes outwards. Lower yourself down into a plie from dance. Well, for those of you who do bar classes, we are now into second position. Reach the arms forward and then open it up. Breathe here as you press down. So a gentle pulse into the legs. Now not only are we creating strength, but we're creating mobility in the joint. Remember when we were at the beginning of the class and we were working that hip joint and we're just moving a little bit to create some hydration in the joint, some mobility in the joint? So that's what we're doing here. Let's work my, my thought process, just so you know where I come from in all of this, is things should be purposeful. If we're doing something, what's the purpose? Why are we doing it? And um, if I'm ever in one of your classes, know that my brain is always going, why are they doing that? And to answer the why gives us the reason for doing the training. Inhale, lift up, parallel your feet. Exhale, and open up, hands to your hips. Take your right toe, turn it to the end of the mat. And then start to move your hips forward and back. So allowing the hips to kind of move again in that joint. So triangle pose is all about hip movement. In fact, the spine stays in its neutral position all the time. By tipping the hip underneath you, it allows room for the spine 
to hinge over top of the front leg. So let's take this front hip, draw it back. And as it draws back, the body comes forward. It's like if you have children, the teapot, right? So the teapot reaching down, right? So here, again, if you feel straight in the back of the knee, you can use your walk to give you alignment as you open up the opposite arm up towards the ceiling and gaze up. So finding space in your body. So when you create space, the bones have a place to move. Otherwise, what happens is we get what's called compression. The femur bone's here, the pelvic bone is here, and they jam into each other. So we can create some space in that joint that allows us to move and expand into the pose. So taking a nice deep breath here in. Exhale, breathe. That taking that arm that's reaching to the ceiling, bring it down, and then rotate that back heel and come into a low lunge. Hand comes down, reach and look towards the back of the room, now opening up as we come into that involving lunge. Breathe into it. So let's bring a little bit of fitness into our training here. Right, bring your hand down on the outside of your foot, step back into a plank. Now lower yourself down into that push up. Exhale, bring yourself up. Lower yourself down, exhale, bring yourself up. At any time, you can bend your knees, lower and push, and lower and push. Two more repetitions and we'll come to down dog. When you finish that last repetition, curl your toes under, lift up, press back, downward facing dog. So the leg that's furthest away from the camera, bring that one up, three-legged dog. Step forward into your lunge. Lift yourself up. Open yourself up. And turn to the front of the room. All right, parallel your feet and going the other way. Turn the toes towards the end of the mat and just get your hips to move. All right, this is a little hip dance. All right, getting some hip movement. With the legs straight, can the pelvis move underneath you? All right, for all of my belly dancers out there, no problem. It's like, ah, they move. So the front hip moves in, the back hip moves on top, the body shifts forward as we come into triangle pose. And again, if you've got hyperextension in the knee or there's a lot of strain there, hand to your shin if you have a water block. Hand to the block, bringing the arm directly underneath you as you reach up into the opposing side. Breathe. Strong and stable. And now again, think about space. How can I create more space in my body to allow me to go maybe further into the pose or to have more ease in the pose? Go ahead and then bring the hand down. Soften that front knee. Move your block away. Come to a low lunge. In this low lunge, you can always bring your knee down. Place that hand on the mat, rotate towards the back of the room. So we open up into that revolving lunge. Breathing, holding that breath, or holding the pose as you breathe. And then bring the hand down on the inside of that foot so you can step back. We have a second set of push-ups, but this time let's go to a wide position, wider than the mat. Lower yourself down, press up. Inhale to lower. Exhale to press up. Inhale to lower. Exhale. Remember, you can always go to your toes. Right about now, you may be thinking about, can we start to do the restorative part of class? Two more repetitions and you've done this work. One more repetition. Good. Lower your knees down. Press back. Child's pose. <sighs> Catch your breath, reconnect, and then bring yourself up to a seated position. Perhaps there was moments during the standing poses or the flow where you're like, my heart is racing, I'm feeling very warm, there's effort there. Let's start to bring the effort down so as we calm our bodies. So bringing your left leg out, your right leg just bends in comfortably for you. 
whatever that is, maybe it comes in tighter, maybe it moves out further, what is a comfortable place for you? Flex the foot of that leg, reach over into a side bend. And this is where the belt, or your bathrobe, can be, or your bath, bathrobe belt, not your whole bathrobe, right, can be super, super effective. It's like, oh, I just need a little bit of assistance to move into that side bend. And then roll the rib cage back and look under the arm towards your bicep. Inhale. Exhale and switch sides. So again, you can use the, the belt if you like. Holding it gently, reaching up and lengthening, side bending. Another thought is to bring the bottom shoulder to the inside of your inner thigh. So the bottom shoulder comes in as we lengthen outwards. Finding that in your body. And then inhale. And then this Just bring this leg in. Take the belt around your right leg. Make sure there's nothing that you're roll into. Extend the leg up towards the ceiling. So a gentle flex the ankle. As best you can, try and create a straight line from hip to knee to heel. If there's tension, bend the knee just enough. And then extend the opposite leg long. Inhale here. As you exhale, encourage the leg towards the torso. If you are able, you can take a hold of the big toe with your first two fingers and close the loop with your thumb. And then take the opposite hand to your hip, keeping that hip down. Let's take a deep breath for you. And as you exhale, even though there's effort to hold, try to find ease. Where can I find ease in my body? And perhaps that's the relaxation of your facial muscles. Perhaps it's a relaxation of your torso. So maybe it's a slow breath. Whatever that is for you. Bend that knee, remove the belt, and then straighten the leg out. And then just notice in that very short time, with your eyes closed, how that leg that you just stretched has changed. It may feel longer, it may feel more grounded. It has a different sensation than the other side of the body. So bend your knees, push your feet on the floor. Take the belt around your foot and extend. Find the length first. Then reach the opposite leg along the mat. Then bring the arms overhead to where you find your point of flexibility without moving into what I call hyper flexibility. So if you're really mobile, really focus in on anchoring the pelvis so the pelvis stays anchored as the leg moves through. Take a few deep breaths here. I am going to give you right after this my favorite of the post of all times. And um, if you don't have a block, you can use a wall and I'll explain the two options for it. Let's take one more deep breath here in. Exhale. Now bend your knee, release the belt from your foot, and then just hug the knees in and gently walk. So, if you have a block, right, you're going to use the long, narrow edge of the block underneath your hips. If you have a wall, you're going to move your hips up against the wall and then swing your legs up the wall. So it's going to be legs up the wall or hips on the block. So, roll yourself back, press your feet into the floor. Lift up into a shoulder bridge, and then your pelvis goes on the block. For those of you online, and I saw who you are who practice with me, I know you ask for this one all the time. It's like the best for your low back. Take your arms out, palms open. Take a deep breath. Lift the chest. Exhale, and then let the chest just settle down into the space that you created. You can keep the feet on the floor if 
be like with one leg at a time, extending the legs up towards the ceiling. Just gently press the heels upwards and turn them downwards. So you can see if you don't have a block that imagine the wall of your living room is behind your legs. And the pelvis comes heavy into the floor. And you just breathe. down to the feet to lift your hips upwards and slide the block away, allowing the pelvis to come down. You can either just lean the knees against each other to rest or extend the legs out. Let's just take a deep breath. Inhale. Exhale. Let the entire weight of your body sink into the mat. Let your eyes close. As we come into Shavasana, it is an opportunity for you to reset. for Pilates. So if you want some Pilates core, nine o'clock tomorrow morning. Love you all. Bye.